Hey everyone, Cobra here with another Asia Legends video. So guys, in this one, I'm gonna talk about a few of the tips that beginner players are gonna find especially useful. And of course, some of those tips will also be helpful for mid-game players. I think end-game players will not find these useful because they know everything already. So guys, um, before we get to this video, I want you guys to go down to the link in my description, find the Discord link and join my Discord. If you're a fan of this channel, join it up there, come in. Come into the Discord channel and let's talk uh, when you have a few questions. If you need any help with your roster, just ask in there and for sure I'll help you out. I also post links when I go online on Twitch. So uh, you can know when I'm online in there. And also there's other people who are very knowledgeable about the game in the Twitch, in the Discord already. So you can ask them as well. So guys, so the first tip, of course, you must know it already. And if you don't, uh, you should. It's the mine, the gem mine. There's three upgrades for the gem mine. Each costs 500 gems. And at level three, you get one gem every one hour and 36 minutes. So it fills up to 15 gems. And it, it says here how much time is needed until it's full. But uh, of course, you should be able to click it every single time uh, it's available. 1,500 gems, guys, are gonna pay themselves off after 100 days of just having the gem mine on. So as a new player, you should be able to max this out for free without need uh, the need to buy any of the packs. But if you do, it's gonna make it much, much easier uh, to maximize your progress because you're gonna have a steady source of gems. You also get gems from other stuff like the daily quests. So you can also do that every single day. Tip number two follows up to tip number one is do your daily quest, guys. The daily quest give you a steady 10 gems every single day, plus some other rewards like free energy, free arena refreshes, uh, some silver and some experience to level up your account so do the daily quest do them every single day if you miss out a day it's fine nothing is gonna be reset do your daily quest you're gonna get 10 gems you're gonna do your weekly and get that ancient shard once uh, every five days so uh this one is also very helpful you get a, another two refreshes out of this you get one day xp boost which is nice when you time it correctly with a few of the events and for the monthly rewards, of course, everyone knows that the monthly rewards are the best ones. Whenever the time comes to get that uh, sacred shard, you feel especially happy because your hope uh, to get a good champion out of that one. So, and the same thing goes for the daily login rewards. If you miss a day, nothing is going to be reset. But uh, if you don't miss a day, then it's just going to be you get the 90 day rewards in 90 days. Of so guys, tip number three would be um, the market. Personally, I found the market especially uh, helpful to be max second after the gem mine using your gems uh, once you go uh, to go down in unlocking the market it's going to require uh, silver but then it's going to require a bit of gems and each level is going to require more silver and more gems and it's definitely worth it guys because here you'll be able to find ancient shards uh, five ancient shards every single month are uh, for a 200,000 silver costs and of course there's some gear that it's crazy how um, how good of gear you can find in the market it's all rng of course how it's gonna roll but some gear is gonna be available it's gonna be for about 500,000 silver you can roll on that and if you're lucky uh, you're gonna have a good item tip number four is of course the sparring pit the sparring pit uh, is where you level up your heroes you guys might not see that as an advantage but look at all these heroes i have right here these are some of them are level 40 have level 60 character in there level 50 character all these heroes are gonna be leveling up essentially for free because after you maxed out, um, after you unlock the sparring pit, these are just gonna level up when you sleep, when you're at work, when you're doing uh, anything in the game. Uh, you don't need to be actually in the game for the experience to tick. So it's a great investment if you plan on playing the game uh, for the long term, even after 100 days. I don't recommend though to upgrade uh, the 350 gems to, to gain a bit more experience because the difference uh, is very minimal and the amount that it costs is significant. It's about a thousand gems for each one of these. So it's not worth it in my opinion. So guys, the next tip would be to do your faction wars attacks every single day. Of course, the faction wars is going to take a bit of time, but every single time you do a faction wars fight, you're going to get one glyph and glyphs is what is going to help push the that account from the early to the mid game and then from the mid game to the late game. The glyphs of course provide um, bonuses such as flat defense, HP percentage, resistance, speed, and you can look at all those when you go to your glyphs uh, that's in store. After you do a few battles, you're gonna start stacking up all those glyphs and those are gonna be extremely helpful in boosting your gear. You might not think that 1% boost is important, but uh, when you have nine items that can be upgraded with glyphs, then all those together will provide a significant boost 
for your champion and then multiply that by five you're gonna have a significant boost to your champions just by doing faction wars every single day so guys tip number six would be your great hall uh, a very big mistake i see e even players in the mid game say is that they do not um invest in their great hall as you can see my great hall right here i have uh, most of them at, at blue at blue and four of them at, at gold level the gold level is the maximum you can have at level 10 accuracy is the one that i focus on and it's the one that i do recommend early game mid play mid game players and end game players to focus on until they unlock every single one of them as you can see i have 3000 um, medals right here but uh, i can easily unlock the the spirit accuracy tree although I don't use any spirit champions in the clan boss. So uh, I'm just saving those until I get a good champion. And if I get a good champion that deserves an investment, then I'll, I'll put all those medals in the specific tree that's gonna help that champion. So for now, I'm just farming those. But for new players, guys, you should focus for this uh, accuracy tree in the Great Hall. The accuracy tree in the Great Hall gives a significant boost to your account because it gives you 80 accuracy without the need of any gear. And 80 accuracy, guys, it's, it's extremely uh, a big boost to your character. It's not like having uh, an extra 20 resistance or an extra 12% uh, critical damage. This won't make much of a difference on a character than uh, AT accuracy would because accuracy is what helps you uh, do a lot of damage on the clan boss, especially for characters that apply debuffs. If they don't apply the, the debuffs, then your clan boss damage will be significantly uh, reduced. So the next tip after maxing out your great hall and doing as many arena battles uh, every single day as possible is to max out your clan boss damage and by doing so guys the clan boss is what gives every single day rewards is the best source of rewards in the game uh, from early game to end game ultra nightmare is where the best rewards are then we go nightmare and uh, up to the easy boss the easy boss does not give uh, really good rewards but you can um, actually skip that boss very quickly uh, during the, your game time. Uh, once you reach mid game, you should be able to, to do at least hard and brutal clan boss. And those can give uh, good rewards, especially the immortal set. So uh, try and find a clan that actually does clan boss every single day and kills the boss because once you kill a boss, you're gonna get twice the chest than usual. So the, the way that these chests work is that um, based on your damage that you do on the clan boss and the range of the damage that you do, uh, you're gonna get the responding chest. So, so by doing over 39 million damage here uh, in the Nightmare Clan boss, you get the ultimate chest, and this chest has actually have a chance to drop a sacred shard, uh, but also give you a legendary skill book, which is extremely helpful, guys. Do maximize your clan boss damage. Try and focus on your team that's gonna be uh, clan boss centric. And uh, once you maximize that team, you're gonna get the maximum amount of rewards you can possibly have. Uh, from the clan boss every single day. So the next tip guys is of course to maximize your mystery shards and the utilization of your mystery shards. You're gonna farm mystery shards uh, from the campaign. You're probably gonna buy them off the market as well, but you're gonna have them stuck up slowly, but surely you're gonna have a great amount of mystery shards. So open those guys, do not let them sit in the summoning portal and think that they're not worth it because look at this you have 1.4 percent to get a rare out of mystery shards so every 100 uh, mystery shards that you do have you're gonna get about one rare a bit more than one rare actually so it's that's why it's 1.4 percent so you're gonna get 1.4 percent amount of rares for every 100 shots that you do get that might not be a uh, significant in your opinion let's look at how many uh, rares i do have in my uh, champion vault so let's look at all those rares guys all these rares are of course most of them are from ancient shards but some of them were i was extremely uh, lucky enough to get them in the beginning of the game uh, through mystery shards mystery shards actually helped me get apothecary for example and apothecary as you all know is an amazing champion to have even for late game he's gonna be useful for the dungeons 20 so if you get lucky enough and get him out of a mystery shard, then it's going to boost your progress significantly. So open up your mystery shards, guys. Do not let them sit uh, without any use uh, in your summoning portal. The next tip, guys, would be in the tavern. In the tavern, of course, guys, you do know that it, this is where you level up your characters. You can upgrade them. You ascend them, of course. Uh, but also you can up upgrade their skills. The most important tip I want to give to early game players and mid game players of course is to uh, not waste your skill books 
just because you do have the skill books, it, this does not mean that you should use them on all your champions that you do get or a new shiny champion that you do get. For example, I do have Lord Shazar. He's, uh, what, he's not my latest legendary that I do have, but he's one of the better legendaries that I got lately. So I could use my 10 legendary books on him and max out his skills possibly. But that would be a waste in my opinion because legendary skill books are so extremely hard to get. Extremely hard to get. So a new player should be saving these up uh, that, that time that he gets a really good champion. For example, Arbiter. This is the end game goal for uh, finishing the missions. Once you finish the missions, you're going to get Arbiter. And you want to max out her skills at least her A3 and her A4. You, you're gonna wanna um, to max out those and if you get unlucky like I did you're gonna need to max out a1 and a2 as well so you're gonna need a lot of legendary skill books and the same goes for Razin Razin is one of the fusions and once you get him you need at least 12 legendary skill books so save those up save those epic skill books as well because those are also uh, useful for other champions like for example I do have Allure as well and I would like to max out some of her skills but I want to keep those books in case I get a better uh, an epic champion in the future. Rare books, you're going to reach a point that you don't need them because uh, rare champions are not going to be your focus. And all the rare champions that you do have are maxed already. So those are just going to stack up and even go above 100. So guys, speaking of, of Arbiter, my next tip is to focus on your missions. Try and finish up all those missions because the rewards you're going to get throughout uh, all, all finishing all those missions. It took me about five months to finish my missions but it was definitely worth it guys you get the most important <laughs> rewards are of course the sacred the two legendary skill terms and arbiter in the end but uh, throughout the um, doing the 286 missions guys it's where you're gonna get about i think about 5,000 gems so uh consider that as a free to game free to play player or even as a spending player 5,000 gems guys is not nothing it's over a hundred dollars worth of gems so um, do your missions and finish up those challenges as well. Try and do them at the same time. So once you finish those up, uh, they, they are, of course, uh, the challenges are going to disappear from your screen. But uh, the missions are just going to stay there <laughs> and just to tease you because um, I would be so happy if we got a few more missions uh, to do. The next tip, guys, would be to maximize your, your event uh, rewards potential. And what I mean with, by that is, guys, if there is an event that you think that you can possibly complete uh, and get as many of the rewards as possible, then you should try and do that. For example, the Dungeon Divers event is a great event because it's very easy to complete. You can get points by farming dungeons and campaigns. So the way I got all my points is by uh, doing the campaign and leveling up my champions. So I got, uh, I started leveling up my champions in there. I got some uh, loot and that loot gave me points. And those points actually helped me get all of these rewards. And, and the really important rewards here were the Voyager and the Epic Skill Tome guys. But also the three day XP boost really helps because there's a, there's a champion training tournament also going on right now. And that's gonna help me save a few gems without the need for me to buy any XP boost. Try and maximize the, the event rewards without the need to spend any uh, of your gems. You can just do your normal farming, but consider like, for example, if there's a dungeon divers event going on, do not go and farm potions because potions are not gonna give you any points for this. So instead try and farm the campaign or farm a dungeon like the dragon, spider, ice golem, or fire knight. So guys, another tip, tying into my previous tip uh, that I told you guys before would be Minotaur. The Minotaur is where you uh, you get mastery scrolls for your champion. Mastery scrolls is what is gonna help your champion literally uh, double their damage, especially on the clown boss where all the rewards are. And uh, once you get those divine scrolls, the later scrolls uh, in, the, in the mastery trees, is where you get the tier six masteries. The tier six masteries are the ones that's gonna um, differentiate your champions uh, damage from other champions, of course. And for example, I'll show you my Razin. My Razin has full masteries and without the Giant Slayer, my Razin uh, damage would be insignificant on the clown boss. Just, but just because he has a Giant Slayer on, his damage is significant. He does over 3 million damage on the Nightmare clown boss and that's not something you should skip. So. Try and farm that Minotaur and get those uh, masteries for your champions. And if you cannot farm the Minotaur, if you're an early game player, saving those 800 gems in order to upgrade the masteries for your champion is definitely worth it. This is what I did for my free to play account. And I'm going to show you here, guys. This is my free to play account. Let me uh, reduce this a bit. So yeah, this guys is my free to play account. And 
I'll show you. I do have three champions uh, right here with full masteries. It's my kill, it's my berserker, and my war maiden. And these were all maxed out through uh, doing the 800 gem upgrade, and it was definitely worth it because I'm now at gold three in the arena. This wouldn't be that easy without having full masteries. Another tip, guys, that I would want to give to new players is to not level up every single hero that you get, uh, especially. Um, to level 60 because you might think that they're gonna help you push through content. For example, I do have Allure. Allure is a great champion that can help you go through the Fire Knight dungeon, but you might think she's worth to take to 60. Of course she, she is worth to take to 60, but if you're limited in resources, she can actually be useful at level 50 in um, finishing off the Fire Knight 20. This is what I did. I do have a lore at 50 and she's really great in uh, helping out with the Fire Knight boss. The same thing goes for Felhound as well. Felhound is a great champion that helps for the Fire Knight boss and you don't need to take him to 60 guys for him to be helpful because his helps comes from his skills and not the masteries. I don't have any masteries on him. So there was no need to uh, take him to 60. Taking a champion to 60 is a significant investment, so you should save that up for the champions that are really going to be worth it. They're going to be worth uh, taking to other places other than the dungeons, for example. So if you have a champion that can be used in both the campaign, the clan boss, the arena, then that's a champion you can take to 60 for sure. So uh, this goes ties in with my next tip, which would be uh, like, for example, Bogwalker. I took Bogwalker to 50 because I thought this champion was gonna be needed for me for my clan boss team but um like i was getting ready to invest way more than uh, in him i actually started doing his masteries which was a mistake because i had him at level 50. the only reason to start doing masteries on a, a, a character is if you take him to 60. once you take a character to 60 then you should start farming all of his masteries unless you just want the the first uh, one or two uh, tiers but um, once you take him to 60, he's going to be able to unlock that 6 tier mastery and that's when you want to spend your energy. So all these masteries that I've, all these scrolls that I've uh, farmed on Bokwalker are basically wasted because I'm not going to use Bokwalker anywhere other than maybe, I don't know, the uh, faction wars right now. So, so guys, don't do the same mistakes that I did and uh, level up anything that you get because you think you, that it's going to be needed in the future. Save up those those resources because those are definitely going to be needed in the future when you get a good champion and of course if you get a good champion. Another tip that I would want to give to new players is find a clan immediately guys. The sooner the, you can get in a clan the better it is because you're going to get daily rewards and the daily rewards are not only from the clan boss but also from this chest right here. You see this chest right here? This chest maximize, um is enabled when you get 90 stars as a clan. The, the way that you get stars is uh, once you click this I information button right here, it shows you how you get stars for uh, your each member of the clan. So each member of the clan has to do all these tasks in order to get three stars. And if every uh, single one of your players does this every single day, then you're going to get the maximum amount of stars every single day. If you don't, those stars are going to save up and the next day uh, you get a few stars and then you're going to reach the 90 um, star mark. Once you reach uh, that star mark, guys, this chest is going to be able to be clicked. Once you click that, you're going to get a range of rewards. Those rewards can vary from silver uh, to energy to gems to ancient shards. So it's very important for you if you're in a clan to click that button for that chest and do the maximum amount of stars that, that you can uh, every single day so that you can be able to get the maximum amount of rewards every single day out of this chest. So guys, thanks a lot for watching so far. I know that I went through a lot of tips for new players. If you are an endgame player and think that I've missed a few of those tips, leave them down in the comments below uh, so that I can share them in a second part maybe of this video. So uh, guys, if you like this video, leave a like down below. Uh, of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys.